What's going on, everybody? It's Joe Junta with Trend Trading Academy. I'm here to help you trade and get paid. Guys, I'm excited because today's video is going to be powerful. But before we get to that, I just want to let you know, we've been working hard on this website. We've been really working hard on getting everything ready for the Trend Trading Academy website. We've launched it. The students are making money together. And uh, we've been really busy with a lot of stuff going on with that. So that's where I've been the last week or so, but I'm back and I'm ready to make it happen. And I appreciate all of the love on the channel, man. The, the likes, the comments, the subscribes. You already know, I always try to interact with everybody. When you comment, I comment back. Um, and yes, that is me commenting. I've had people ask me, is that really you commenting or do you got somebody else doing that? No, it's me giving you guys the emojis, giving you guys responses. That's me on there. I. I personally go and I read all the comments and um, it really, it thrills me to see all that. So I definitely appreciate that. Um, and you know what guys, we're at 35,000 subs now. It seems like just yesterday we put out the 25K video and, and we're already at 35K. So man, we're growing and uh, appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, click the little bell so you get notifications every time we drop a video. So now for today's video, I promise you it's going to be powerful. We're going to talk about currency cycling. We're going to talk about acceleration and deceleration in the market and how to understand currency strength analysis, basically speed in the market and how that plays into how we trade. I promise you, if you can get this together, this is one of the most powerful tools you have in Forex, period. Currency strength analysis. Let's get to it. All right, guys. So first things first, we, we talked a little bit about this last week and then we and then, you know, of course, we didn't get to finish. So I want to try to finish up acceleration and deceleration tonight. Um, I want us to start thinking about swing trading like we have a destination. All right. Nobody. Uh, I, I can't say nobody because my wife is a, she likes to joyride. She just likes to drive around. And I don't know. What, I don't know why I don't get the enjoyment. But um some, most people <laughs> don't just get in the car just to drive and go nowhere, right? Um, we have a destination in mind and we, we're trying to get somewhere. And so, it, you know, I, I tell the, again, I use church stuff a lot. If, you know, if you're offended by church stuff, uh, I'm sorry. But it, I, I use church analogies all the time. Um, I, I kind of tell people like this in the church when, when, when there's like a prophecy in the church, right? Maybe, maybe somebody shares an encouraging word of prophecy with you. Um, a, a prophecy is not like a fortune teller where, they, where they're, you know, kind of telling you the future. You know what I mean? Like, like they got a crystal ball and they're like, ooh, you know, like it's not like that. A, a prophecy is, wh is where basically a prophet will come and reveal God's intention. And then, and then it's a, our job to follow that course, right? So many times it's like a road sign, right? It, 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 if, if the prophet comes into the church and says, uh, you know, Miami is 500 miles south, you know, and you're driving down the highway, I-95 I or I-75, whatever direction, you're driving down the highway and you get off in 236 miles, the sign wasn't wrong. You got off too early, right? Man, you got off the highway talking about I'm not in Miami. Oh, the sign was wrong. The sign wasn't wrong. You got off. What, you, what were you doing? Right? You, you, you didn't follow the GPS. You didn't, <laughs> you didn't stay the course. Um, many ways is the same thing in Forex. These patterns and, and zones and all the things we see happen and unfold before us, they're, they're very similar to that in that they're giving us road signs in where to go. So if we can think of the chart as though we are on the highway and we have a destination in mind. Like for an example, with that swing trade, we have an 1800 pip destination. Now, does it mean we're gonna get to 1800 pips? No, not necessarily. It means that's the goal. That's, the, that's, the, that's where we're headed, okay? Now, along the way, we're gonna follow the signs to make sure we're staying on the right track. And the first sign might be the trend line break. And so now we have another, we, we have an understanding that there was a fork in the road and we could go down or we could go up. And price told us a sign came out, a sign appeared before us in the form of a trend line break that said, 
this is the direction we're going. We're going up. So what do we do? We followed that sign. We're not, we're not telling the price to go and do anything we don't, that it doesn't want to do. We're not telling price what to do because we don't have that power. We're not the market makers. All we can do is see the signs that are set before us and follow them. So when we see the first sign is a trend line break and it's telling us that there's bullish movement in the market, we follow that sign and we go bullish. Now, the next sign is that we have a structure re a rejection. Like we, I'm just going through the steps I showed you earlier. So the next sign is that we see a structure rejection telling you what? Stay on, stay on the road. All of these should be treated as caution lights. Every time we see a sign, we, we should pay attention and, and have caution. Because that sign, even though we could, we could have seen 10 bullish signs in a row, we could get a bearish sign. And now that means, wait a minute, I got to start to take a look and see what's going on here. Maybe the map is changing directions. There might be a wreck ahead of me. <laughs> GPS is starting to change, change the course on me. You know, we have got to pay attention to all of the different um, signs that the, that the market gives us. Okay. And when it gives us a sign, we have to weigh out all of the information that we get and then make the most educated decision that we can based on the information that we have. So that's simple Forex. So, so now, basically, the next thing we can do is when we have multiple signs in a row. Now, now think about it like this. Let's say I, I do a lot of traveling, all right? And I'm going to kind of keep referring back to this illustration because it'll help you understand. But I do a lot of traveling and I'm on the road a lot. And uh, many times, let's say for an example, if I'm leaving Detroit, when I, go, when I go south, and let's say I'm going southwest and I'm going down 94, uh, down toward Indiana, toward South Bend, right? I might see a sign in South Bend, Indiana. In fact, there is one that says St. Louis, X amount of miles. Now, why am I seeing anything for St. Louis? Man, I'm two states away. Why am I even thinking about St. Louis, two states away? But notice how the closer I get to St. Louis, the more signs I see for St. Louis. Now, I might only see one when I'm real far away because it doesn't require that many signs. There's not that many people going in that direction. But the closer we get to St. Louis, the more defined the direction becomes. It doesn't just say St. Louis 60 miles. Now suddenly it's telling you stay on this road and go left or right. Stay on this road and go here. At the fork, take this bypass around this way. The more it gets more detailed in its direction at the closer you get to the end goal. It is the exact same thing in Forex. When we see a trend reversal or when we see a move in the market, in the beginning, we may only see one sign, but we may see signs for other things as well. Because when I'm in South Bend, I might only see one sign for St. Louis, but I see a thousand signs for Chicago. Right? That doesn't mean I have to go to Chicago. It just means that that's the more prevalent situation where I am right now. Right? That's the closest thing to me right now. But once I make that left and once I start to kind of head south and what, now suddenly I see less and less of Chicago and I see more and more of something else, right? And, and, and the closer I get to other cities, the, clo the more I see of that and the less I see of other, uh, you know, um, signs. The, what I'm trying to help you understand is that when we have a whole bunch of bullish movement or bearish movement in the market, you're going to see a whole lot of bearish signs. You're going to see lower lows and lower highs. You're going to see trend lines. You're going to see uh, small patterns. You're going to see a whole lot of uh, uh, bearish pin bars. You're going to see dojis. You're going to see all kind of bearish symbols in the market. But once we hit that breaking point, there comes a point where I'm seeing less and less of the bearish and more and more of the bullish. And even though I'm seeing more bearish, it's declining. And even though I'm seeing less bullish, it's increasing. And so at some point we reach this, this level and that's called critical mass. That's called critical mass. It's when even though this is bigger and this is smaller, 
this is actually stronger because it's increasing and this is weakening. And when I get to that 50% where, where everything is all zeros, everything is all even, that's called critical mass and that's where the shift happens. That's where everything goes from being a bearish market to a bullish market. Because even though this has been rising and this has been falling, it's still been in a declining bearish movement. Now suddenly I've hit critical mass where even and the bulls take over the market. And at that point, that's when we start to see major, major signs in our direction. That's when we start to see, boom, we're here. Now I need to give you defined direction, not just a sign. Hey, bulls are coming. Hey, buys are coming in the market. Simple. There's no real def def uh, definition. But once we hit that level of critical mass and the bulls take over, and the bulls now own 51% of the market instead of 49% of the market. At that point, that is when we're going to start to see more definition to our signs. Now, suddenly, we, instead of seeing confusion where we're seeing bullish momentum, but bearish pin bars. Oh, man, I don't know why. And that's when we say, ah, oh, just stay out of the market. Instead of seeing bullish momentum, but three black crows. Uh, man, I don't know what to do. But at some point we get to a place in the market where we see bullish momentum and now we start to see candlestick patterns that follow it. Now we start to see bullish pin bars. Now we start to three, see three soldiers. Now we start to see a trend, a, a defined trend moving up. All of those things become uh, come into confluence and all of a sudden the market agrees and that is critical mass. That is when everything comes together and we get in. Okay, because now we have defined direction. I say all of that to say this. We have got to learn currency cycle. Here we go. So obviously, when we look at currency heat wave, uh, as we know, we're looking at a, basically a, a pie that shows the eight largest currencies, the eight you know, major currencies. They're not actually all majors, but they're the, the, the eight main currencies that people trade, uh, sticking away from exotics. Um, and just so you know, all your exotic pairs rely on one of these pairs to, or one of these currencies to, uh, to, to find movement. But so when we look at this, essentially the bigger the piece of the pie, the stronger the currency is. The smaller the piece of pie, the weaker the currency is. Okay. Uh, this morning, we started out our trading day with GBP being the strongest pair and JPY being the weakest pair this morning when, when, the, when the trading day started. Okay. Um, and so that has shifted a little bit. NZD has found a lot of weakness and uh, JPY is starting to cycle back up. GBP has remained strong and CHF has remained strong. So, uh, you know, that's kind of where we're at. Now we can look at that on multiple time frames. And I told you last week that in order for us to see, um, in order for us to see like the monthly or the weekly chart, to, 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 take, to take over strength or to gain strength, we need to see the smaller charts do so first. So in order for a weekly chart to be strong, we have to have seven cycles on the daily chart in order to make it strong, okay? In order for the daily chart to become strong, then we need, it to, we need to have um, six cycles on the four hour chart in order to make the daily strong. In order to get the four hours strong, we need to have four cycles on the one hour. In other words, they get big and then they get little and then they get big and then they get little. Four cycles of strength on the one hour before you can see strength on the four hour. 15 minute, you're gonna see four cycles on the 15 minute and so on and so forth, right? We can go all the way down to the one minute chart, which we won't do. If we're gonna see currency strength on the weekly chart, which is what we trade, then that means that we're gonna have to see the smaller time frame cycle a whole lot. Well, what does that cycling mean? Well, it, it's actually very simple. Watch this. When we look at that on multiple time frames, we can see that the 15 minute chart, one hour, four hour, daily, right? So when I say top down analysis, I do top down analysis from the weekly chart, right? And then I look at the daily and I enter on the four hour or the one hour. You guys have heard me say it a million times. I do top-down analysis. I find my structure on the weekly. I confirm it on the daily. 
I trade the breakout on the four hour or the retest on the one hour. You guys have probably heard me say that a million times. However, there is another principle to think about here, which is the bottom up analysis, which is not really called bottom up. It's called currency cycling. Some of you have probably wondered how to understand this and I'm going to teach you how to do it. It's actually very easy, but it is advanced. It is an advanced Forex technique. Think about it this way. We want the, if we are trading from the weekly chart and let's say we're in GA right now, if you look at the GA on the weekly chart, you see that the GBP is slightly more is slightly stronger than the Aussie. Okay. Slightly. However, if you look at it on the daily, look at it there. GBP is far weaker than the Aussie. If you look at it on the four hour, GBP is almost as strong as the Aussie. Look at it on the one hour. GBP is actually stronger than the Aussie. Look at it on the 15 minute. It's about two and a half times as strong as the Aussie. If we are trading the weekly chart on a swing, then essentially we want GBP to be stronger than the Aussie dollar if we want to trade a buy. However, before the weekly chart can be stronger, guess what has to happen? Every time a 15 minute candle forms, that currency is going to cycle. So GBP is going to go up on the 15 minute chart. It's going to push up and then it's going to have a pullback. Then it's going to push up. Then it's going to have a pullback. Then it's going to push up. Then it's going to have a pullback because that's what trending markets do, right? And in order for the one hour GBP Aussie to be, for GBP to be stronger than the Aussie on the one hour, well, guess what? It would have had to have been stronger on the 15 minute for four cycles. Four cycles of the 15 minute chart will have to have shown strength for GBP in order to move the hourly chart. So we need to see four strong cycles for GBP in order to see the one hour cycle be strong for GBP. Well, we've seen that. GBP on the 15 is you know, twice as strong, if not stronger than that, than the Aussie. And now we're seeing that on the GBP. It is stronger on the one hour. In order for the GBP AUD to be stronger on the four hour, well, guess what? We're going to need to see four hours, four one hour cycles that the GBP owns the market over the AUD. When we see four cycles of GBP strength, that is going to push the four hour GBP into strength, right? It's actually both gonna push even and any more than that, any more than a four hour cycle is gonna push in GBP's favor, okay? Now, if we wanna see a daily cycle, which we have not seen yet, GBP is still, still weak on the daily. If we wanna see the daily to be stronger, um, then we're gonna need to see six four hour cycles in favor of the GBP in order for it to affect the daily, for that to be even and start to tilt the, the scale in favor of the GBP. Once we, see, um, once we see seven cycles of the GBP in strength over the AUD on the daily, now we're going to see the weekly in favor. Once we see four weekly cycles, I hope I'm, I hope I'm making the point here, right? So what we need to see is we need to see strength on a consistent basis. Now, some of us have been using currency heat wave wrong. Why, why do I want to trade when the market is already in favor? Now, again, if you're trading the short term, the day trade, the scalp, that's a different story. If you're trading the swing or any type of a longer term hour, you know, long term trade, swing, position trading, I'm not waiting for the GBP to be bigger in order for me to trade because guess what? At that point, it only has any, it, the only place it has to go is down, right? I'm not going to get in after the strength is already there. Let me show you something real quick. Essentially, these are FIB levels. 
if the GBP <clears throat> is down here and the Aussie is up here, so essentially Aussie is holding 90% of the strength in the market, is that sustainable? Is this just going to go straight across like that forever? And this going to go straight across like that forever? Well, no, because then there would be no pullbacks, right? So essentially what this thing does, right? This is just like what it looks like on the RSI, right? And this, right? My beautiful lines here. Don't you love my beautiful lines? What I'm looking for is I want to see GBP pushing up and Aussie pushing down, right? What that looks like right there on an actual trading chart, on, that's, a, that, that's what it would look like on the strength, like on the vortex or, or some kind of a strength meter. It would, it would show Aussie coming down and GBP coming up. And at this point, that's my confirmation at the crossover for the buy. I'm not going to wait for GBP to be, it be super strong, way bigger, and Aussie to be super small. Because at that point, all we're going to do is start pushing back down <laughs> like this again, right? And, and essentially, that's going to go against me. Because guess what? What this looks like on a chart, GBP AUD. When Aussie is strong, we're pushing down. So when this was pushing up, and GBP was pushing down, the chart, the candlesticks were pushing down, okay? However, when the Aussie is at full strength, I own 90% of strength in the market, GBP owns 10. However, GBP is pushing up and Aussie is pushing down, the candles are gonna start moving up. And the, the weaker the Aussie gets and the stronger the GBP gets, the stronger and faster this move is going to become, okay? Along the way, we're going to have some pullbacks. We're going to have some things like this, and it's going to be when you see things like this happening. All right? Does that make sense so far? I don't want to wait until Aussie is at 90 and GBP is at 10 because at that point, guess what? It's going to turn around on me. I want to see, again, it's just like trading, it's just like trading into levels. I don't want, if I have a level of, of resistance, why would I want to trade into it? Because all I'm going to do is many times get rejected and I'm going to, I'm going to enter a buy, trade into it, get rejected and push down, right? And so now I lose a trade. What I want to do is I want to wait, break through that resistance and trade from the resistance up, Right? Because I want that to push me in the right direction, not force me in the wrong direction. Well, this is the same way on the currency strength. When we're looking at currency strength, acceleration and deceleration, what I'm essentially looking for is right now you have Aussie. And I'm not saying right now, I'm just saying on my example here. Aussie, although, is, although right now at this level, Aussie is stronger than GBP in this, in, in this illustration, is it really? Who's really in control? GBP is pushing. Aussie is falling. So yes, Aussie is bigger than GBP on the pie. The piece of pie looks bigger. But is it really bigger? Is it really stronger? Or am I cycling out right now? Right? If Aussie is dropping and GBP is pushing, GBP is what's in control. Now, has it taken over yet? No. Because when both of these get to the 50, that's when I'm going to see two even pieces of the pie on the, on the chart. But while, the, while, while I might see a bigger piece of pie all the way down for the Aussie, all I'm seeing is the Aussie drop and the GBP go up. It is in this level here that I'm looking for the buy. Why? Because at that point, Aussie has proven a consistent weakness and GBP has finally caught up. It's not bigger. It's not bigger, but it has finally caught up and now it takes over. And so now instead of trading into a level, 
I'm trading off of a level. And now you're going to see GBP get big and Aussie get small, right? Oh, that's ugly. And so I want to trade a growing triangle, not an already big triangle. If I'm looking like this, and now let's say, you know, now let's look at the heat wave. So this is GBP, right? So GBP is, has been strong. And you know what? Let me do it the other way around. Let's say GBP has been dropping, okay? And so AUD has been in control. So the weekly chart looks like this. It has a big AUD and a smaller GBP, right? So the weekly is showing strength in favor of the Aussie. Now I'm starting to see that this was a real strong push down. Got a pullback, but now this one was a little bit weaker. It was kind of like, you know, a lot slower. There was some more movement on the bull side. Um, and so now I'm looking for a reversal. So if that's the case, and now I look at the four hour chart, the weekly is showing Aussie strength. But let's say that Aussie strength used to be like this. And we've already shaved off that much, right? We've already taken away some of the Aussie strength. And GBP used to be like this, and it's grown. So now the four hour chart has AUD looking like this, but GBP looking like this. And AUD used to be like this, but we've shaved off all that. And GBP used to look like this and we've grown it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now GBP is in favor on the four hour chart. Now, I want to look and see, because that to me, that's secondary. That's, that's secondary. The first thing is, is structure. Am I, put, am I pushing into a level of structure that is pushing me in GBP strength? That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. Do mm -hmm. I find structure that's pushing me the opposite direction? Okay, yes. Most of the time, that little move right here, is what is going to start pushing me. That's probably what happened here. This area, this rejection is what caused this to go away. Okay. And for this to grow. Now it's going to pull back and this is going to cycle. This is probably going to get a little bit smaller and this is going to get a little bit bigger, but it's not going to affect this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to retest. And that's when I'm going to get my structure. So now I got low, high, higher, low, higher, high. Now this is really pushing out. This is really getting small. And this is starting to come to even. That is where I want entry. I want to push, retest. Now I have even strength and I have dominant strength in the four hour. Now I find entry. Boom, right here, I'm in. Mm -hmm. Because now as the weekly starts to take over, as the weekly cycles, what used to be small is now taking over the market and Aussie is becoming the small, weaker strength. I'm, I'm capitalizing on GBP dominance. So over here, we have the one hour, okay? And the one hour gains strength, then it gets weak. Gains strength, then it gets weak. Gain strength, then it gets weak. Everybody understand what I'm seeing? What, what, what's going on here? Well, it, when that does that four times, guess what's going to happen? Now, the four hour has its first wave. Ooh. Then it gets weak. Because right after this happens, you're going to see that happen. Then it gets strong, then it gets weak. Strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak. Six times, six times. And then guess what happens there? On the daily, that's your first wave. Because then you have this. Then this happens all the way up seven times. Then guess what that means? 
That's your first wave. So candlesticks are the basis of everything, but we use the currency strength to understand where the bulls and the bears are at these levels of supply and demand. It all comes together. You need to understand price action. How, what, what do candles mean? What is a doji? What is a shooting star? What is a morning star? What is three black crows? What is three uh, sh- soldiers? What is, what is a, 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 a pin bar? Like we need to understand candlesticks. Then we need to understand support and resistance and how that plays in. We need to understand supply and demand and how that plays in. And then last but not least, more advanced, we need to understand currency strength analysis and how currency cycles. If we can understand all of those four things, we have everything we need to know to be a master f- a price action trader. All right, guys, there you have it. This is everything. I promise you this video, if you can master and understand the interaction between currency strength and how currencies move, the speed, the acceleration, the deceleration, the cycling of the different time frames. If you can get all that, I promise you, you are going to be a beast in Forex, all right? Because this really is the crux of where everything else is built upon. It's the, it's the foundation of all things Forex, all right? Hey, don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. And if you're looking to become a student, go ahead and go to trendtrading.academy trendtrading.academy become a student the community is amazing we have our own social media platform within the website uh, a great community it's it's powerful and the students are making money together as a team all right and before we go listen if you're ready to take your trading to the next level i put out a video that i want you to watch right here and it's how i'm giving you my own trend line strategy that is showing you how I swing trade and how long I stay in a trade. Make sure you watch that. I'll see you on the next video.